more carburetor stuff. So every time we do one of these carburetor videos, we always get really good feedback. You know, the, the fundamental videos. So we're going to continue. The last one we did was on carburetor sizing. Now the formulas don't always add up to real world results. This time around, I want to talk about the different styles of carburetor, the ones that we commonly come across. So now obviously, I can't cover the entire history of the carburetor and every type of carburetor there is. I'm going to focus only on the type that we commonly use, the type that we commonly come across on the types of cars and the types of builds that we do. And it's important to note here that every carburetor that's currently in common use, 4 l carburetor, is a derivative of one of these. So it's all going to fit. The only one that isn't really represented here is, is the Summit style, which is an Autolite carburetor that was revamped by Holly and now it's marketed by Summit. And essentially it's the same as a vacuum secondary Holly for all intents and purposes. Function is the same. So we're going to run through the evolution here and talk about the differences between mechanical secondary, vacuum secondary, and velocity secondary carburetors. So you're talking about vacuum and mechanical. Now, all of these cars have mechanical carburetors. These carburetors all have mechanically operated secondaries, but they all have a delay feature built into them. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But when you're talking about mechanical and vacuum, you're pretty much strictly talking about Hollies. Now, all of these carburetor designs date back to the 1950s and early 1960s. And everything's just an evolutionary step from there. And the evolution really ended right here with the thermal quad, but that's where I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's start from start. So the most simple, basic, straightforward type of four barrel carburetor there is, is known as a double pumper. Right? And what a double pumper is, is very simply, this is a double pumper carburetor. It means that it has an accelerator pump on the primary side and an accelerator pump on the secondary side. There's a direct link between your foot and the function of the secondaries. Now let's talk about accelerator pumps for a minute, just, just for people who aren't familiar. It's important to note that all of these carburetors have essentially the same exact function on the primary side. The primary side is where your idling is done. The primary side has a direct one-to-one -one relationship with your foot, with the gas pedal, the throttle, and each of these has an accelerator pump, all different styles of accelerator pump, but accelerator pump on the primary side. And what the accelerator pump does is simply fill in the void between the time you open the throttle and the velocity through the carburetor is able to pick up and suck fuel out of the boosters. So if you didn't have an accelerator pump, you'd step on the gas and it would just go and die. Right? Because when you first open a throttle, so you're idling, your, uh, your vacuum is high, you're pulling fuel through the idle circuitry, you open the throttle, that vacuum falls away. And before fuel can be pulled through the boosters, the engine will die. The accelerator pump just squirts raw fuel into the carburetor to make up for that little gap. So the primary side of all of these carburetors is functionally identical. They're all different styles but functionally identical. The double pumper Holly is literally two two-barrel carburetors back to back. So essentially you've got two primary sides and they're just, just one faces the front, one faces the back in one package and there's your double pumper Holly. The vacuum secondary, so remember we need a delay from the time the throttle, the throttle blades are open and the time the fuel is going to be pulled through the booster, there needs to be a little bit, little bit of a delay there. You can either delay it or you can add supplemental fuel. The double pumper has the accelerator pump over the secondary side. The vacuum secondary has no accelerator pump over the secondary side. So what they do with the vacuum secondary is delay the opening of the, the secondary side of the carburetor until there's sufficient velocity through the primary side to ensure that there won't be a flat spot or a bog when the secondaries are opened. No secondary accelerator pump, just keep the throttle blades closed until there's enough air coming through the primary side that it can support the opening of the secondary side. It's that simple. So velocity through the primary side is translated into vacuum. There's a vacuum passage that goes from the primary side to the secondary diaphragm and then when a sufficient velocity through the primary side, 
the secondary starts to open. That vacuum has to fight a spring that's in here, and that's how you tune the secondary side of the carburetor. If you were to put too light of a spring in the secondary side, it would act just like a mechanical secondary carburetor with a bad accelerator pump on the secondary. It would just it would die. So that's the whole purpose and function of a vacuum secondary carburetor. And this is the Summit Carb, which by the way is a fantastic carburetor. I, I was surprised when it, the first time I used one. It is functionally the same as, actually the vacuum, the vacuum diaphragm on this carburetor is directly from one of those Summit carburetors. So they're that interchangeable. And they're fantastic pieces. So that's your essential hollies and all 100% of your derivative Holly carburetors. I mean, there's, there's how many different companies make Holly clones or Holly knockoffs? Are all based on one of those two style carburetors. All right. So now we're going back to the 1950s because that's when these these styles of carburetor were first developed. Previous to that, everything was a two barrel. So there were a couple of different versions of four barrels, early crude four barrels at the time, and. One of the best of them, and the, the Hollies came around in 1956 or 1957. Just previous to that, Carter Carburetor Company started making four barrels, and they came out with the WCFB. That was the original Carter four barrel carburetor. So, what does WCFB stand for? William Carter four barrel. That's it, that's simple. There's no, there's no magic designation to WCFB. And that was the original. Carter version of the four barrel carburetor. One of the issues that they were having even back then was vapor lock and heat soak. It's just a universal problem with dealing with gasoline. And the materials that they're made of, like for instance, the Hollies are not made from aluminum. The WCFB was also not made from aluminum. It was subject to a heat soak issue. So in order to beat that heat soak issue, they revised the carburetor completely and came out with this. And this is, this is an Edelbrock version of it, and the Edelbrock is just a clone of the Carter AFB. So what does AFB stand for? Aluminum four barrel. That's it. That's what AFB means. WCFB, Will Carter four barrel, AFB, aluminum four barrel. And the whole purpose of making this thing out of aluminum was so it would dissipate heat and be less subject to vapor lock and heat, and heat soak than these other types of carburetors. Aluminum four barrel. So, the AFB differs from the Holly in that while the secondaries are linked mechanically, mechanical secondary, just like the Holly, the Holly mechanical secondary is, there is no secondary accelerator pump or any way to delay the actual opening of the throttle blades. So what Carter did is it incorporated, wait, but, but I just gotta explain this carburetor real quick. This is an example of how you can get burned at a swap meet real easy. I bought this thing, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago at a swap meet, it looked, it looked pristine. And I got one of hundred bucks for it. So I was like, well, I need one, yeah, I'll take that. So when I got it home, I bolted it on the car, Car went run. I, what's going on with this thing? So I popped it apart and found that it was a flood carburetor. We had a massive flood here in Nashville a, a year or two before I bought this carburetor. And this thing had been sitting with water in it, just, just rotting away for, that's not from gasoline, that's from water. So uh, it's, it's, it's trashed. The, uh, the jets are actually kind of like corroded into the body of the carburetor. It's, it's not useful for anything except parts. But that's how you can get burned. I mean, it, it could look pretty, but you never know what's on the inside of them. So, the AFB, mechanical secondaries, right? So the, the secondary is linked to the primary side. There's no vacuum operation there. What they did was they delayed the air through the boosters by using this weighted air door. So what this does is these weights hold this closed, hold these butterflies closed until there's sufficient velocity through the secondary side of the carburetor so that it overcomes these weights and these doors open. These little notches here are there to direct the initial 
shot of, of air coming through, the initial vacuum, the initial pull from the engine to the underneath of the booster and start the booster flowing. And then once the booster's flowing, it, this only takes really an instant, it's like, a, like a, a fraction of a second. Velocity picks up enough, it overcomes the weight, these weights, and poof, this flops open and you have four wide open barrels. The downside of this is that this is a restriction in the second, it, 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 this, is, this is a flow killer because it's just, and remember when these things were designed, flow wasn't really a problem. You know, it wasn't a consideration. This carburetor design is from 1960, so you're still dealing with very small engines. You weren't moving a lot of air through these things. So a little bit of restriction from the secondary air valve in there didn't really add up. But it's one of the reasons why Hollies, for ultimate performance, have a big advantage over the Carter Edelbrock style carburetor. So, and there was another thing too, there was a, there was a tuning trick to these. So people used to put the biggest Carters they could on small engines. Back then, 283 Chevys and 260 Fords and 273 Mopars. They wanted a lot of carburetor, but couldn't handle a bunch of carburetor, you know, initial punch. So what they would do is actually add weights. They would, they would drill, they would drill into these and add lead shot. They would do all kinds of modifications to the, to the counterweight on the air door to delay that opening enough for the engine to get up, you know, up on, on pulling velocity to keep these things closed and keep it from bogging. So you were able to use 625 CFM carters, AFBs, on tiny engines and not have a bog. That was the big tuning thing with these, adding weights, playing with the counterweights. So that's that style of carburetor. Now, the odd one out here, we've got Hollies and we've got Carter Edelbrocks. The odd carburetor out here is the Quadrajet. And the Quadrajet is important because this was the next step in the evolution of the carburetor. These were introduced in 1965, 1966. And instead of having, again, and these are, these are mechanical secondaries, there's a direct linkage between the primary and the secondary side of the carburetor. But instead of having a weighted air door, they use a velocity-operated spring-loaded air door. So spring pressure, instead of weight, keeps these, is, is the resistance the delay factor in the secondary side of the quadrajet. They're, they also operate with a vacuum brake to keep, to again, delay the opening of the secondaries until just the right time. The advantage to this is that you don't have, it's, it's not the same uh, detriment to flow that the air valve second, or the, uh, the weighted air door has. So this was the next step in the evolution of this style of carburetor. In 1968, Carter says, well, Rochester has a better system for the secondaries than we have. So what they did is they revised very slightly the AFB and came up with the AVS. So the AVS, as you can see, has this air door, this air valve, exactly the same as the Quadrajet. And the AVS, so what does AVS stand for? air valve secondary. <laughs> Carter just threw these letter combinations, you know, there's no continuity between, but at any rate, yeah, so aluminum four barrel and then air valve secondary, that's, that's what those abbreviations mean. So functionally it's the same as a AFB Edelbrock style carburetor, and now Edelbrock makes these things also, the Edelbrock AVSs. Is there a, a, a real difference between them? You will never find it. The, the only real advantage that the AVS has over the AFB is the tunability of the secondary air door, the secondary air valve. Because, you can because it's spring-loaded, you can tighten and you can adjust it to, get it to get it where you want it to be for maximum hit. Where you can, okay, you can, you can add and take weight off the air doors on an AFB, but it's much more difficult than just turning the spring. And, and tightening and loosening the tension on these. And then you've got what I would consider to be the last step in the evolution of the common four barrel carburetor, and that would be 1968 when Carter introduced the thermal quad as direct competition for the quadrajet. And this also incorporates, just like the quadrajet, incorporates a secondary air door.
uh, a spring operated secondary air door with a vacuum brake to delay the opening. The main functional difference between these two carburetors is that the air door on the Quadrajet works to pull up the jets on the secondary side where there's no relation to the jets on the air door on a thermoquad. So that's pretty much the evolution and the essential differences between the types of carburetors that you're going to come across. The mechanical, vacuum, and velocity style secondary carburetors. All of the main differences. Of course, each of these carburetors is completely different in their, in their construction, but the concepts are all the same. The primary side is always one-to-one, -one, always has an accelerator pump, always has idle circuitry, and so on and so forth. And then these, when you get to these velocity style carburetors, big differences in the function of the secondaries. But again, the whole purpose of it, the only reason these, these differences in the secondary side of the carburetor exist at all is just to compensate for that, that lack, when you flat punch it and the secondaries are opened, to compensate for that lack of velocity through the, through the carburetor itself that'll pull fuel from the boosters. That's the only reason these differences exist. Which one is gonna work for you just depends on what you're expecting to get out of your car and what your tuning abilities are, what your tuning desire is. Any one of these carburetors will function for a typical car, typical circumstances, any one of these style carburetors will function just fine. The engineers knew what they were doing when they built these things. So that's it for now. And I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.